We think we label individuals such as myself who I've not known a lot of times as just Scott, except for in my family. I'm known as um, pastor or whatever, my occupation, whatever, uh, preacher or whatever. And so um, a few weeks ago, uh, or during that time, somebody uh, gave me a new title. And so I'm going to go by that um, from here on out. So if you could get the Chippendale dancer stuff going on here, I want you to uh, like, like turn up the music and I, and I do all that. Kind of stuff. And, uh, and here we go. Here we go. Here goes the neighborhood. So let's get a clap going here. Here goes the neighborhood going. So here I am. I am now known as Thank you. Uh, I don't know where to put this. Is this good or will it burn up? That's good? Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm sure this thing is all set. I don't... I, well, Robin Missy Cottle got me this. It was probably on sale and inexpensive, and so they got me this. No expense and, uh, was wasted. And I was glad they did, so I am now the, the Sermonator. You like it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Every week, I'll just remind you who I am, the sermon. And uh, well, I, I got a kick out of it because I told the uh, the group this morning as they were in the, the praise and worship team, I said, you know, I'm preaching on the joy of the Lord. It'd be nice if you smiled today. And they did. With a little prompting, I was down there going like this. And uh, a lot of them went ahead and smiled. And that was good. I like that. Thank you very, very much. Um, and so we are going to preach about the joy, or speak about the joy of the Lord this morning. I want to read a little something to you. In 1937, architect Floyd Lord Wright built a house for industrialist Hibbert Johnson. One rainy evening, Johnson was entertaining distinguished guests for dinner when the roof began to leak. The water seeped through directly above Johnson himself, dripping steadily onto his bald head. I agree. He called Wright in Phoenix, Arizona. Frank, he said, you built this beautiful house for me, and we enjoy it very much, but the roof leaks. And right now, I, I am with some friends and distinguished guests, and it is leaking on top of my head. There was a pause on the line. And Frank Lloyd Wright reportedly replied, well, Hib, why don't you move your chair? Amen. <laughs> this morning, we're going to talk, be talking about joy. I'm not talking about just, um, um, and as you know, we're in this uh, Grace Grows Fruit series, and we're going to continue in that for a while. And um, remember, it is singular. It is Grace Grows Fruit. Not Grace Grows Fruits. Grace Grows Fruit. So, Grace Grows Fruit. And so if you've got, if you've got the Spirit of God that lives inside of you, then in fact, you have those qualities that they mentioned. Love, peace, joy, long-suffering, all those kinds of things. We mentioned last week about patience. Patience is, I thought I would start out with the hardest, and so that's what I did. Yes. But this morning, we're going to go with joy. Now, um, one of the things I would have liked to have done is there's a few individuals around here that, would, that really, really need to... Uh, uh, need to let their face know that they're joyful Christians, really. You know what I'm saying? So I thought of lining them up here, but I thought that would be putting them on the spot, and that probably wouldn't be user-friendly. And so I didn't do that. I didn't do that, John. I didn't do that. I really, I, I thought, I thought, no, we were going to use John, but, but John, John decided not to. So, or I decided not to use John, because I wouldn't want to embarrass him like that. Yeah. 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 He's joyful. It's just his face doesn't show up. That's all. <laughs> Central to being filled with the Spirit is joy and rejoicing, isn't it? Amen. Amen. Uh, what I discovered was that the Word of God seems to focus heavily, and I mean very, very heavily, on joy. And um, so uh, I want to read this to you. The Jewish Encyclopedia, Kaufman Kohler, stated that no language has as many words for joy and rejoicing as does the Hebrew. In the Old Testament, there are 27 different words 
that are used primarily for some aspect of joy or joyful participation in religious worship. Hebrew religious ritual says, demonstrates that God is the source of all joy. In contrast to rituals of other faiths of East Israelite worship was essentially a joyous proclamation and celebration that God, the good Israelite, regarded the act of thanking God as the supreme joy of his life. Pure joy is the joy in God as both its source and its object. Uh, one of the books that I was requested to read or asked to read, thought they would be, it would be good, was it was called Sitting at the Feet of Rabbi Jesus. And so I started to dig into that, and I started to look at that, and there's one chapter that is, that is uh, designated to giving thanks to God. What the Jewish belief uh, was, was that they needed to thank God for everything, and I mean everything. And they were, they were very ritualistic in their prayers. In other words, when they prayed for the, uh, their food, for example, they would pray the same prayer every time. They would pray the same prayer before their feet hit the floor. Uh, they believed that what happened was, at night when you fall asleep, God takes your soul from you, and he keeps it for a while, and then in the morning he returns your soul. So the first, very first prayer that they pray is, thank you God for returning my soul overnight. And they did all of these kinds of things. You remember when Jesus... It is said that when Jesus broke bread and gave thanks, that was not an original prayer of his. That was a prayer that was simply, it was a ritual that they went through. But it focused their mind and their hearts on God, who was the source of all strength and all joy. Amen. And I believe that if we get our mind and our thoughts off of our situation, I believe that we as individuals can also have strength and joy just like that. Amen. Amen. Now, the psalmist says, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. The New Testament states it over and over and over again as heavily as the Old Testament did. In 1 Thessalonians, he commands us to be joyful always. In Romans 12.12, 12, he says, we should be joyful in hope. In Philippians it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. Amen. Amen. I was wondering why he gave that twice. In other words, why did he say, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, Rejoice. Why did he say that? Well, I got to thinking about my children. And you probably can relate to this. Have you ever felt like you're a stinking broken record with your kids? Amen. Have you? Seriously. Amen. Have you ever felt like you say the same thing, the same way, every stinking week? Ever, I remember when my three girls were growing up, we had a hot water heater that wasn't very, it wasn't very big. And so I had three girls and a wife. I want to tell you, I was the last one to get into the shower every week. Every week I would say the same thing. Every week I would get the same results. Every week I would say, now you girls, listen. I gather a family meeting. I say, girls, listen. Here's the deal. Dad would really like to have a hot shower. Except I said it with a little more force than that. And I said, you girls take a long time in the shower. I don't know if it's a girl thing or a guy thing, it doesn't matter. But you take a long time in the shower. And every week they would go in there, I'd say, you got to cut it down, you got to cut it down. So could you please, please give me the pleasure of having a nice hot shower this morning. While we lived out in Walton, I want to tell you that I could probably count on one hand and that was while my two girls were at teen camp and my little one would get baths at night. I remember while we were living in Walton, I could count on one hand the amount of times that I would tell them, hey girls, take a shorter shower, could you? Please, please, please. They wouldn't do it. <laughs> and so what Paul is saying in Philippians, he is saying, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, 
Rejoice! Yes. Good. Good. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Amen. You're like my kids. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let's do it one more time. Let's try it one more time. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice! So he is trying to tell us what he is, what is urging us on. He is saying, if you are filled with the Spirit, then you have a rejoicing spirit in, with inside of yourself. Yeah. Uh, at all times, there are many Christians who struggle with this idea of having joy in their lives. Their problem is, they don't have any joy. Right. Yep. The evangelist Billy Sunday said this. He noticed the absence of joy in their lives of many people he preached to and he observed. If there is no joy in your religion, you've got a leak in your faith. Amen. Yeah. Now, some of you will point out that the reason they have no joy in their life is because they don't have a reason to be joyful. Mm -hmm. Life seems like it's falling apart. They aren't satisfied with their job. They even, if they even have one, their family has problems. Their health isn't good. Their car has gone in for repairs for the 10th time this year. They just can't see a reason for being joyful. Lord help. I can't blame people for feeling like that. I can't blame people when it's hard to be joyful, when life is going against you. It's hard to be joyful when you're struggling with troubles. There's a problem with that approach to life. If we wait till everything can turn out right. the way we want them to in our lives, right. oh boy. we're not going to be joyful until all the leaks are patched in our lives, then we're never going to experience joy, or if we do have joy, it will be a rare occurrence. Amen. Now, Amen. Jesus himself warned us that in this world, you will have trouble. Amen. You're going to have it. Yeah. It's going to happen. It's inevitable. We don't need to be under our circumstances. And I want to tell you, those of you that have come from addictive situations, I want to tell you that God can give you freedom over that stuff. If you don't need to be under circumstances, and that God can free you. Amen. And whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Amen. Amen. Where, I, I missed the page here. Oh, here it is. I found it. I want to read this to you. Oh, no, I better not. That's why Scripture so often tells us to rejoice, even when it doesn't make any sense. James chapter 1 says, Consider it pure joy. Now listen to that. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Amen. And perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Amen. God doesn't want to hold any gift from you, and that includes joy. Amen. Peter tells the Christians of his day, dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed with his when his glory is revealed Amen. in each one of us. Right. Amen. Amen. What are these scriptures saying? They're saying if the roof is leaking and if you can't get someone to fix it right away, move your chair and change your perspective. Amen. Take some control of your life. In the Bible, there's a story. Paul and Silas, you might know the story pretty well. They've been beaten. They've been flogged. They've been set down in a dry or a damp, dingy um, cell in, in, in jail. They've been everything. Can you imagine what, what happened there uh, while they were there? One of them said, can you imagine this? Paul might have said to Silas, well, Paul, or Silas, how are you doing? Well, I got flogged. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I can see that. <laughs> what happened to you? Same thing, got flogged too. 
How do you like it down here? No, not the best of conditions, really, is it? So what are we going to do? Well, we'll take it to court. That's what we'll do. We've got Bernstein and who else? Yeah, we'll take it to court. No, that's not what they did. They said, you know what they did? They said, you know what we're going to do? This is weird. This is weird. This is really weird. But what we're going to do is we're going to start singing and praising, and we're going to start praising God. Amen. But before they did that, guess what they did? They, the church started praying for them. And I mean, they were praying like, like, like the house was on fire, because it was. And I want to tell you, they were praying like that, praying. Now, we need to pray for Paul and Silas, because they're locked next to a jailer. And so they started singing and praising God, and the jailer was locked to them. And, and all of a sudden, they started witnessing to him. And so what happened was, was the jailer saw that, and he said, guess what? There must be something different about these guys. Amen. There has to be something different. You see, we have been placed in a world that is not fair. We have been placed in a world where there are problems. Amen. We have been placed in a world where there is... There is difficulties in this world. But guess what? We as believers in Jesus Christ, we are the light of the world. Amen. And we do weird things. Amen. When we go through trials and persecution and trouble, we start singing a song. That's what we start to do. Hallelujah. And guess what? The jailer looked at them and he said, that's so weird. <laughs> These guys are so weird, but guess what? He wanted something they had. Right? Amen. He said, I've never been flogged before. Now, I'm making some of this up, but I don't think I'm going to scripture for justice. I've never been flogged before, but I'll tell you what, if I was flogged, I'm going to act like these guys. Because I've seen people flogged before. And they don't ever look good at all. And he... And so what happens is, this is the cool part of the story. Paul and Silas convert the jailer. The jailer, of course, unlocks him. He unlocks him. And lets him out. Yep. Well, Paul and Silas go back to the church where they're praying. Of course, they didn't have church like we know church. They didn't have buildings like we have buildings. They were all meeting in some, somewhere, and they... And all of a sudden, there was a knock at the door while they were praying. Knock at the door. They said, well, what's the deal? Somebody go answer the door. So somebody went up, answered the door, and here was the very people that they had been praying for. Right. Now, a lot of times what we do is we cross our fingers and hope to God that it happens. Come on. Yep. And we think, oh, my <laughs> word. And so when something does happen, when God does answer prayer, we all of a sudden are surprised. Guess what? God answered my prayer. Can you believe it? But I want to tell you, guess what this person did? There's a knock at the door. She looks out. Guess what the deal is? It's Paul and Silas, the very people they're bringing. So what she do? Like many of us would, she shuts the door back. That's what she does. <laughs> Must be a ghost or something. Must be a ghost. I want to tell you, in the darkest nights, you guys, in the darkest of all the nights that we've ever had, God answers our prayer. Amen. And God gives us joy in the darkest of nights. Wait a minute. This is what it says. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God and the other prisoners were listening to them. And they too were saved. God's kind of joy is not an emotion that happens Amen. to you. Amen. God's joy Amen. is His tool for you to use to take yeah. control of your life. Right. You see, your life is spinning out of control. Yes. So what's going to help it? To be a grouch? No. no. To complain? No. To tell people what's wrong with them? Nope. No. To be judgmental in your spirit? No. Nope. Absolutely not. Amen. The difference will be is how much joy That's right. you Amen. show. Amen. 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 I want to tell you about a guy by the name of Gene Vincent. This isn't in my notes. Gene Vincent was a guy who had lost. He was on disability from the army or whatever. But anyway, he, was, he had gotten into Agent Orange. And they said his brain wasn't right. 
and, and, and it wasn't right. It really wasn't. And um, they said that he, uh, his brain wasn't working at 100%, probably 50% or 25, I don't know. But all of a sudden, Gene was the neatest guy. I remember one time I was listening to him and he was talking and he was so excited about Jesus and what Jesus was doing in his life and his brain's half missing and, and, he, and he's saying, oh, Jesus is so good. And he's talking to me and all of a sudden he rips off, I mean rips off the whole book of James. Whoa. Just the book of James. And I looked at that guy and I thought to myself, give me some of that ancient orange. <laughs> Yeah. But all of a sudden, I can, I'll never forget. And I'm not talking about mere emotion. He would start talking about his best friend, who was Jesus Christ. And all of a sudden, you would see him right in the middle of, of a group of people because he was so joyful, you just wanted to be around him. And he'd start talking about Jesus, and he'd start doing this. Whoa, Jesus. Oh, and you'd start freaking out, and he'd go, whoa, Jesus. And you'd get a little more scared. You'd think, uh-oh, he's going to break out with something. I don't know what it is. But he'd be going, whoa, Jesus. But it was so exciting to be around Gene. So one time, we're in the, we're in the sacred halls of the sanctuary of the chapel. And in the chapel sat the golden calf. It was the piano. <coughs> the piano was the golden calf that you never got around, you never touched. It was the golden calf. Three of us guys were there, and all of a sudden, Gene was in one of those, whoa, Jesus moods. He said, you guys, I got to play you a little song that I learned. And so he gets on the golden calf, and he starts playing out this tune. I'll never forget it. No fear of wandering or growing astray. My feet have been planted on the glory way. And he made it up. He made it up. He made up the song. The guy with no brain made up a song. Way better than my song that I could ever make up. That they tell me I've got a full brain. That's what they tell me. for doing that. But it didn't bother Gene. Well, Gene wasn't an institutional guy, needless to say. He was a great student, but not an institutional guy. He left after one semester. They tell me he took a church somewhere down in Louisiana. They say it went from zero to 300, just like that, Woo! overnight. All right. Why was that? Because he had the joy of the Lord that was so attractive, Amen. that was so Amen. unbelievably attractive, that Amen. it drew people to him. Right. Amen. Amen. Now you say, well, it's just not my personality. You know? Well, go ahead and be an Eeyore all your life. That's right. Amen. I'll put you in a book. Seriously. Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. How can I do that? How can I lay hold of the joy of the Lord? Galatians says, the fruit of the Spirit is joy. Amen. So how do you do that? You guys, you do it one way. Here's how you do it. You get filled with the Spirit. Amen. That's how you do it. Yes. Well, what's getting filled with the Spirit? That the Spirit of God lives inside of you. Amen. You say, didn't that happen at salvation? Yeah, it did, but it didn't. Yeah, it did, but it didn't. Yeah, it did, but it didn't. Now, here's the thing. When you were, when you were saved, I want to tell you what happened. God filled you with the Spirit as much as He could. Amen. As much as He could. Amen. But guess what you did? You held a little bit back. Oh, it wasn't a lot. It might have been a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever. But you held a little bit back. Come on. Good preaching. You held a little bit back. Yep. Amen. And you ha it might have been your career. It might have been your car. It might have been your baseball bat. I don't know what it was. But you held Amen. a little bit back. Amen. But then one day you came to the realization that you were holding a little bit back. Right. Amen. And you said, God, I don't know what all it is. And I don't know what all the big words are for this. But I want to tell you, I want to be literally saturated by your spirit. Amen. Because I have seen individuals that have been saturated with your spirit. And there is such a joy and a peace and contentment about them. 
and they don't get rattled and all that stuff in there. And self-control is unbelievable. I want to tell you guys what happened is you got all of God when you got saved. But he didn't get all of you. Amen. And what happened is, is you started surrendering things to God that God would put the light on. And all of a sudden, you began to see the things that God wanted you to give back to him. And you were literally saturated. You were filled with the Spirit. Amen. What happened, didn't it? Yep. That's what happened, right? Yep. That's what happened, wasn't it? Yep. So it begs to ask the question. Have you been filled with the Spirit? Ephesians says, be filled with the Spirit. How do I do that? First, speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Sing and meet music in your heart to the Lord. That'll be, that'll be good news to Jimmy and Brian, people like that. that go ahead and make music to the Lord. Now, I told the praise team, don't get up here and just, you know, go through the motions this morning. And they don't usually. Really, they don't. Here goes the neighborhood. <laughs> this will attract nobody. <laughs> Sorry, right. you won't. Right. Yep. Well, bless God. You've been so good to me. Lord help us. There's no joy. No, I'm not picking on the praise team, you guys. Because I look out at you guys right now. Yep. And I see every one of you, even though the dark, it's dark in here. I see every one of you. And guess what? The joy of the Lord has got to be your strength, you guys. Amen. It's going to show somewhere, somehow, yeah. some way. Yeah. The joy of the Lord is going to show that no. He says to sing with each other with spiritual songs. I want to tell you, you do not, you do not, you do not, I will repeat, you do not want me to sing to you. <laughs> Thank God. I do that to my wife. That's it. <laughs> and then she tells me, Man, honey, that was really good. Oh. <laughs> I particularly like that little bread music, you know what I mean? Again, 1975, 74, somewhere right there. Driving the pinto, acting like a bit shy. <laughs> if a picture paints a thousand words. Then why can't I paint you? The world will never know. And oh, she just melted. And she said, stop the car, I gotta kiss you. <laughs> oh, she was just madly in love with me. Why? Because I was singing with spiritual song, that's why. And hymns too. Say, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Spread a great deal of time in prayer thanking God for what He has done. Amen. Third, submit. I need the word. Third, submit. Did you hear me? Yep. Third, submit to one another in the reverence for Christ. Find a way to serve others. Amen. Find a way to serve others. Help us, Lord. And God will give you this joy when their person. When the prison doors flew open and their chains fell off from their wrists, Paul and Silas could have run away and saved themselves. Yeah. But instead they stayed and preached to the jailer and ultimately baptized the man and his family into Christ. Listen to this. Hebrews 12 says, Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from the beginning to the end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him, he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross, and he is now seated at the right hand of God's throne. Amen. We have one thing that our eyes are fixed on, you guys, in this life. One single thing. 
That is Jesus Christ who sits in heaven. Amen. Amen. And Amen. here in us. Right. And He guides us day by day through His Amen. Holy Spirit. Amen. And our eyes are so fixed on that. It's like if my eyes were so fixed on that music stand, I would be like my wife where nothing else matters. She just zeroes in on things. Zeroes in. Zeroes in on things. And nothing else matters. And I'm screaming saying, come on, we got to go. And she doesn't care. She's zeroed in. She's zeroed in. And she just keeps zeroing in. And zeroing in. Oh, things might hit us from the right, from the left. And but we're zeroed in, you guys. Oh, things might happen. Why? We might be short on money. But that's okay. We're zeroed in. Yep. We're zeroed in on what? We are zeroed in on the fact that this is not our home. Amen. Amen. But we serve something far bigger Amen. and far greater. Yes. And that is my friend Jesus Christ, Amen. who is the biggest and greatest thing we could ever serve Amen. or be a part of. Amen. And that's enough to get down right joyful about it. Amen. Amen. Good. Now, Jimmy, you got your hop. That was my wibble or something. I don't know what that is. I'll give you one last personal story. I'll, I'll be done, I swear to you. Some of you have seen it on Facebook. If not, you need to go see it. I thought of the church, you know, a little bit. I was out in Vancouver, Washington, and my daughter says, we need to go to story time. Story time? What's story time? Story time is at 10 o'clock, and they read my child a story, and then he play, or she plays, and then we do all that kind of stuff. So we need to go to story time. I said, okay. So I went to the first story time, and I endured it and loved it. I lied. I loved it. I lied. But it was all right. The second story time was with a little bit older lady. And they got these things out called scarves or something. I don't know what they were. They were multicolored. And they give all the kids, the kids go wild when they, when they pass by. And they, and they tried to encourage the parents. They said, the lady said, and she was a little bit older, she said, now, parents, we urge you to get involved. So I was a grandparent. I figured, well, I'll get involved then. My daughter, she's sitting there. All the other parents are sitting there. And I've got the scarf in my hand. <laughs> and we do this song like, uh, I forget what the name of the song was. It was some silly song like Skittly Rinky Dinky Doo or something. I don't know what the song was. But you're supposed to wave your flag and your scarf just like she did. I thought I was supposed to do that. All the other parents, all the other parents just sat there. But I sat there waving my scarf just like she did. Just like she did. And I kept waving my scarf and going up and down with my scarf. And I'm 56 years old. These other people are 25. And I'm thinking, come on, I just got off a of back surgery. I can do this. And I'm waving that thing all around. And, and they're just sitting there like, what? <laughs> oh, boy. So my daughter thinks it's a good idea. For the archives. <laughs> when they asked me to be a general superintendent in the church in that room, she thought it would be a good idea to tape this thing of me doing this scare thing. <laughs> All over the place. Well, you hear in the background of her laughing like crazy. <laughs> and I'm feeling like it. You know what? I feel pretty dumb right now. <laughs> but you know what? I didn't care. Libby loved it. Oh, There's a little two-year-old Libby. She's loving pack a pack hole for a wave in the scarf. So what did I do? Did I stop right there? Nope. I waved it a little more. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Don't you think Jesus likes it when his people are joyful. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. I don't mean to take on anybody. Out of all the Braves team, Jimmy, after I asked you guys, yeah. guess who the most 
Yeah. You're exactly right. Yeah. 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 Now, David, where are you? David, David where? David. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, David. David's sitting here beating these babies, man. He took me by his word, or by my word. He is so new in, the, in our church that he doesn't know that he's not supposed to show up. He's like waving the flag, you know? He, that's what he's doing. We're all sitting back and thinking, what is this guy doing this for? And dancing around on his face. I was so glad. What's that tell us? Right. Yep. Huh? Yeah. Yep. What's that tell us? Yeah. Get with yeah. the program. Right. <laughs> more David? He was. Oh, that would need more David. Yes, we yes. do. Yeah. Yeah. Help us. In Lord. spirit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Help us. Only David can be David. Right. Yeah. But you sure set the pace. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that puts the heat on you guys, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I believe Jesus was full of joy. I do too. They always see Jesus, you know, a lot of times you see Jesus as serious. Yep. Serious Jesus. <laughs> there's, a, there's a gal here at the craft show yesterday that had, had a dog look in Jesus' face. Yes. That was awesome. Yes. And Jesus was acting like he liked it. Yep. <laughs> the only problem was he couldn't loop the dog. That was the only problem. And then I would have accepted the Jesus picture. <laughs> We're the light of the world, you guys. Amen. We live in a dark world, but we need to be the light of that world. Amen. Amen. We Amen. live in a world that is going on where people do crazy, crazy, yeah. crazy things. Amen. Right. Lord help us. That's what we've been sent here for. Right? Amen. Amen. 